Continuing on with our sync system series, this one is going to seem seemingly very simple, it is actually one of the most difficult changes that I have noticed for myself. It was very hard for me to adapt this. And for all of the producers and members of Sync Academy that I have coached and mentored throughout the years, this is definitely one of the hardest things to get people to really follow along with and actually do. It's a small thing to do, but what it's going to eventually do for you is change your entire relationship with making music. If you're watching this video and you have dozens or hundreds of half finished tracks on your hard drive, you owe it to yourself to at least watch this one video and to try this out. Okay, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a dime and just a B compare whatever you've been doing, compare it to what you're going to do after you watch this one video. Okay. The hardest, I think, 30% of creating production music and finishing what you're doing is hitting bounce, is basically getting to the end of the track and hitting that bounce button. Of course, getting inspired, getting excited about music, a lot of times that can just come naturally. We hear some music, we wanna go create something, and ideas maybe are flowing and we're feeling amazing, and we've got a skeleton, we've got maybe a big chorus, we've got a big section, but then we're kinda lost and Finishing out and putting some meat on the bones of that track and finishing it to be, you know, a minute and a half or two minutes long, that's the hardest 30%. It seems like it's the most amount of heavy weight lifting in the process. We're going to talk about that in this video and how to get to that point where you hit bounce so that you're not constantly letting all those half finished tracks that are sitting on your hard drive drain you of your energy and your creativity and your motivation. If you don't think that's what they are doing, that is exactly what they're doing because you've definitely created a very, very nasty habit of not finishing what you start. So let's jump into this. Amateurs hit control Q, right? And it's the professionals that hit control B. I can't be the first person that ever came up with that. It's too clever. So I'm sure somebody else at some point came up with that. But I thought what a great short way to memify this concept. It's the amateur that turns on their DAW, gets excited about a piece of music, and then goes, ah, I don't know where to go with this, quit. I'll go watch TV, I'm gonna go do something else, I'll go play video games, I'm gonna go eat something. I'm gonna go distract myself with social media. It's the professional that can sit there, struggle a little bit through it, figure out a way to push themselves through it, or more likely can create like a system to ensure that they're staying productive and motivated. That's what you're learning, hopefully, with this sync system, or we're gonna continue on with this series to learn more tech tactics to be able to do that. But it's the professional that stays there until they are ready to hit control B, okay? So amateurs have all of the freedom and the luxury of making music whenever they feel like it. And if you're just doing this for fun, you don't need to watch this video, you don't need to get any more dedicated to your craft. If you want sync licensing to become a serious part of your income, of your maybe part-time or full-time of what you're focusing on, you better learn how to get to the end of your process with a control B, with actually bouncing your track and having it finished in your hard drive, okay? Here's a key concept, it seems simple, but it is something that will definitely set you free from what you've been struggling with. Even if you hate, you despise the track that you're working on, finish it and hit bounce. Get it completed, flesh it out, create two tracks or two choruses, Create another verse, create another buildup, fill it out, get it completed, get it done, and hit bounce. It does not need to be your favorite piece of music, and realistically, not every piece of music you're going to create in your career is going to be your favorite. I created basically about a 1,000 pieces of music in my sync licensing career. Maybe about 50 to 100 of them were ones that I really loved and thought were just amazing. And I almost felt like I don't even necessarily want to give this maybe to a library. I almost want to keep it for my own personal per projects or purposes. But I eventually did because it was my best bet. But, you know, the 900 that were remaining were not my favorite pieces of music. But I still hit bounce. And thank God I did because some of them ended up being big, big earners for me. Okay. What you're gonna be doing by this one simple change in your approach is you're gonna be creating a habit, a new habit of finishing what you start. And what that's going to do, it's going to generate energy for you in your career. So many of you have been struggling by feeling no energy or lacking energy in terms of starting music and getting new things done because you keep seeing this list, laundry list of half finished tracks. And you know how it is, you get a track 
50% started, you try to go back to it to get it completed and you can never tap into that original energy and it's basically all gone and it just doesn't ever work out again. So the biggest reason for that is because you've created, like I said, a nasty habit of not finishing what you start. So this is not about creating perfect music, even maybe licensable music. We're gonna take our goals here down to the level of we're just gonna be finishing music. That's it. These tracks may or may not ever get pitched to a library. They may or may not ever do anything other than literally get bounced once, sit on my hard drive, and I never listen to it again because I really didn't like it. That's okay. We don't need to go from struggling and not getting anything done to feeling like, well, I have to fix everything in one week and I have to get a library deal next week. That's too ambitious. That's going to set you up for failure. Don't get ahead of yourself like that. What we're doing is we're taking baby steps in terms of reinventing ourselves, creating new habits. And most importantly with all this, we're seeing ourselves as a much more professional person now because we are now the producer that when we sit in front of our DAW, we finish the damn track. Even if we don't love it, even if it's not the best thing we've ever done, because we know if I hit Q, I'm signaling to myself I'm an amateur because I can quit whenever I'm not feeling like it and the energy's not striking and it's just not really for me. Okay, I'm out of here. But if I really want to be one of the three to five percent that go on to do something really significant with my sync licensing career, I've got to figure out how to get to the end of this thing and hit bounce. Even if it's not something I'll ever see the light of day that I'll ever pitch to anybody that I'll even share with anybody or even play on my speakers. That's okay because I'm creating a new habit, a new system of being somebody that finishes my music because I know that that is going to give me more confidence, give me more energy and also allow me that in future tracks, when I hit stumbling blocks, when I hit writer's block, when I get to a point where I don't know where to go with the track, I've got a whole history of great habits formed that I'm gonna finish this damn track, hell or high water, right? Forget about perfect. Focus on what is licensable. This is a conversation we've been having a lot in Sync Academy and a lot of you guys suffer from this perfection syndrome. I definitely did a lot when I first got started. This isn't the best thing I've ever done. I think my mix could be louder. I don't know if my drums are exactly perfect yet. I don't know if this um, chorus is um, massive enough yet or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You will nitpick your way into being an amateur the rest of your life. Just trust me, that is where that thinking leads to. Perfect doesn't exist. It's a subjective form in our heads that we can never live up to. And it literally is a form of procrastination and never making progress in your career. So let's let go of that useless term. Not even useless, it's worse than useless. It is counterproductive. We wanna let go of that. Focus on the word licensable. As you're finishing your track, as you're putting flesh on the bone, as you're um, making it you know, the, the length that you need to and creating all the dynamics you need to, is this licensable? How do you know if it's licensable? Well, you can always compare your track to some tracks that are already in a production music library. That's what I've told you guys many times on my channel and I'm gonna continue to tell you to do that. Go find reference tracks, go find tracks that are already in a production music library that are of quality, that have basically passed the quality test because they're being represented by the company. And honestly, you know, A, B, compare your tracks to theirs. Are your tracks on par? Are they ready? Are they competitive with those? If the answer is yes, you got something that's licensable. Doesn't have to be perfect. Most tracks in a library, they're not perfect. They've got glaring problems. And as I review tons and tons of, of libraries in Sync Edge, I hear them almost every single month as I'm going through them. I'm like, hmm, this track got accepted, but boy, there's some problems with these vocals. Can you guys hear those problems? If you guys submit to this library, maybe you can take up your production with your vocals a step higher, add some value to their catalog. So perfection is not what we need. We just need something licensable. And as I said before, you gotta let go of this too. You will not love every track that you produce, but those tracks, even the ones you don't love, but you do finish, can still earn you sync fees and royalties. I have shared a few videos on this very channel of some of my not so favorite, you know, decent swagger rock tracks, pretty average, cliche, not amazing, not 100% original or creative, so not some of my best, most amazing uh, art or work in my life, but for some reason in Germany, you know, one of those tracks has earned me over $5,000 in royalties. Why? They thought it was licensable. They thought it was perfect for whatever they're using it for. By the way, my royalties, I have no idea. It just says, Germany, this track, this much money. Congratulations. So this is one of these lessons that I learned. You know, it took me many years to figure it out. And I'm so glad that I didn't go to the um, perfection level and limit 
what my output was going to be in my career, I went to a more realistic threshold of, is this licensable? Is this high quality? Is this useful enough for the library that I'm going to be submitting to? And I'm so glad, glad that I finished that particular track and many other tracks. Another example, um, I had this kind of almost rushed, not high quality uh, metal rock track that I was putting on. And it was sort of like the 10th track in an album I was putting together for one of my first library partners I ever worked with way back 20, 2010, 29, 2009, something like that. That I think just, you know, sort of phoning it in kind of a track that I turned into them, but it was licensable. It was good enough. Got aired on a national Jack in the Box campaign. Um, it was kind of a ridiculous over the top monster truck. Um, it was for their monster taco promo. And that track was kind of over the top, ridiculous, you know, metal rock. And it was perfect for that opportunity. So had I gone into this place of like, well, this isn't the most perfect, amazing rock track I've ever produced. So I'm just not going to turn it in because I don't want to do that. I would have missed out on that opportunity. So you really just never know what's going to get placements. Now, of course, this is not a permission for you to just phone it in like I did on that track and do your least amount of effort. Not advisable. I've done that on quite a few of my tracks in my career. I don't advise it. You can obviously get lucky and they can work out for you, but it's obviously not a, a smart strategy uh, for the long run of your career. So don't take, you know, don't make my mistake. Um, you know, it's just a nature of this business sometimes when you're cranking out tons and tons of tracks, it just happens. So always try to find a place for you to get, uh, you know, inspired and to produce the highest quality music that you possibly can to, you know, increase your odds, obviously, of getting more and more high quality placements, okay? So this is a simple concept, but I think it's really more about, uh, you know, changing this one habit that most of you are guilty of. I know many of you guys are not finishing what you start. Um, I had a big problem with this early in my career. It took maybe about six months to a year before I finally got out of it and just started going, hey, I've already put in six hours, eight hours into this track. Maybe I'm not loving where it's going, but I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get this one finished because I don't want those eight hours to go to waste and I want to just move on to the next one. So you got to figure out how that's going to work for you. There's really no tutorial. There's no coaching. There's no feedback that anybody can give you to get you your process for that. You've got to A-B trial it. You've got to try things out. You got to really go for it but you can do it. I can do it. I know many people that can do it, but you definitely got to start trying. And again, if there's one thing that I can encourage you to please take from this video, just start finishing the damn track from now on. Just finish it. Even if you hate it, even if it's terrible, even if it's the worst thing you've ever done, doesn't matter. Hit bounce, maybe even put like a color coding in your, your um, DA or your files, you know, put it on green coloring or some label on it that says finished complete. Because what you're going to be doing, as I said, creating this new habit, this new identity of I'm a professional, I hit bounce, and I finish every track that I start. So let me guys, let me know what your thoughts are on this, if this is going to be helpful, useful, do you think? And if you try this, come back to this video if you can, and let me know how this works out. I'd love to get some feedback from you. Thank you so much. We'll continue with another video for our next Sync System uh, series here on my channel uh, in the next couple of days.